Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to explore the concepts of domain and range. We'll define what functions are and relations, and we'll determine the domain and range of a relation. So a relation is essentially two quantities that are related to each other by some particular correspondence. Now a function, we'll spend a lot of time working with functions, and a function is a subset of a relation. Just a matter of uh, defining things. Remember, in a relation, our independent variable uh, is generally going to be our x value, or also our input into a function. And it is also the domain. So independent variable, input, domains, all the same thing. Well, our, our dependent variable, that's going to be our y or our output and also our range. So we'll have domain and range, we'll have inputs, outputs, we'll have x and y, and when we work with functions, y will also be the f of x. Okay. We can define a function as a relation that assigns to each element x or our input in set A exactly one element y or output in set B where set A is the domain and set B is the range. So we've got a diagram down here with the example of what a function might look like where we've got a set of inputs and outputs. So some characteristics of functions each element of set A or input must be matched with an element of set B. Okay, And some elements of B may not be matched with an element of A. That doesn't have to be the case. Now two or more elements of A or inputs may be matched with the same element of B. So if we have our inputs and our outputs, okay, um, if we have an x and a y, they could both go to z. That's okay. That's that's legal. That's uh, a function. Okay. We know what we're going to get here. If we input x, we're going to output z. Or if we input y, we're going to output z. Okay. Uh, you may hear me talking class about Wonka bars and gobstoppers. This is just two different ways to make the same Wonka bar. Okay. Now what you can't have. Um, you know, if we have inputs of 0, 1, and 2, and outputs of um, like 3, 4, and 5, you can't have the same input going to two different outputs. That's not going to be a function. Okay? That's no way for Willy Wonka to run. So this last example is not a function. So we have an input of one, we might get three and we might get four, but we don't know. So that is not going to be a function, okay? So it says here, to determine whether or not a relation is a function, you must decide whether each input value is matched with exactly one output. When any input value is matched with two or more output values, the relation is not a function, which is what I've got there in that last example. So we've got a couple samples here to find the domain of each function. Uh, we want to find the domain of a equals pi r squared. Well, lots of letters here, but our only variable here is, is r. a is the area. pi is our constant. So what are our restrictions on r? Well, if it's the area of a circle, the radius can't be negative. Uh, it's got to be zero. It can't even be zero. It's got to be positive. So r has got to be greater than zero. Our radius must be positive. In b, we this one we've got is we want to figure out the domain here. So the denominator can't equal zero. So nine minus x squared better not equal zero. Any value that x makes that zero would give our fraction to be undefined. So we can factor that into three plus x times three minus x better not equal zero. And we get x better not equal plus or minus three. 
so our domain then is anything but 3 or negative 3, so the elements in the set x such that x can't equal plus or minus 3 would be a, a valid way of displaying that particular answer. So here's from our library of parent functions, a quick look at the square root function. Okay, so when taking the square root, we're always going to get positive or pr output, so that's why our graph is here above zero uh, on the y's. And our range, we can't take the square root of a negative number, so our domain, our x's are everything from zero to infinity. Okay, now we'll mess with the square root function later on and change its values there. But. So find the domain of each function, also graph C to confirm the domain and determine the range. So in this particular one, we're doing the square root function again, and 1 minus x squared, since we can't take the square root of a negative number, must be greater than or equal to 0. So we factor that to 1 minus x times 1 plus x. It's got to be greater than or equal to 0. So we've got critical points at plus or minus 1. So looking at that on our number line, we're going to have to do some testing here to figure out, because we've got the three different regions. So we're going to have to figure out what works and what doesn't. So testing like a negative 10, if I put negative 10 in here, well, I still get the square root of a negative number. Okay, that's negative, so that's not going to work, so I can't use that. Uh, if I try in the positive region and I try 10, again, I'm going to get a negative square root, so I can't do that. So that's not going to work either. But if I try 0, that will work. I put 0 in, and I can get a positive result. So it's going to be everything between 1 and negative 1 inclusive that region works justifying that on my graphing calculator and so I input that into my graphing calculator and I graph that equation I did a little zoom here for you in advance and sure enough that is the graph of our function and it looks like any value between negative 1 and 1 will work for that so finally, at the end of our notes here, we've got a summary of function terminology. Remember that a function is a relationship between two variables such that to each value of the independent variable, or our x, there corresponds exactly one value of the dependent, the dependent variable, y. Using our function notation, y is f of x. f is the name of the function, right? We can call these g of x, then the name is g, or h of x, then the function's name is h. Okay. y is the dependent variable, or the output. x is our independent and the input. And f of x is the value of the function at x. Review of domain or inputs or independent and range is the outputs or dependent. And then implied domain, if f is defined by an algebraic expression and the domain is not specified, then the implied domain consists of all real numbers for which the expression is defined. So in our problems, our domain here was implied. We had to figure it out, okay? Um, explicit domain those will be given to you in like a uh, piecewise function will have an explicit domain. So that's the conclusion of our introduction to functions and domain and range, and I'll see you in class.